Welcome to another chat about gardening today. We're going to be talking about tomatoes. Seems like we're kind of uh, at that point in the year, doesn't it? We're at least talking about them. Uh, many of us have started growing them. And I've got all mine in, which is a sown. And they have come up so quickly it's like my they've outgrown my hot peppers already and they've only been in for a week so peppers just or excuse me tomatoes just um really get it going don't they so i thought we'd talk about some frustrations with growing tomatoes some of the pest pressure we have some of the solutions to some of our pest pressures. Uh, and, you know, I know that you all in the chat are also avid and well uh, thought through gardeners. So if you have any suggestions for any of that, please, please, please chime in. So let me see. Um, my, uh, my glasses are getting so scratched. Like, you know how you get Sometimes the glasses where they put a coating on them. So uh, UV, whatever. Well, mine is like bitterly scratching off. So anyway, uh, hi, Amanda. Uh, I'm sorry, Amelia. Hi, Claire, Stephen, Stephen, uh, Leanne, Robin. Uh, let's see, who else we got in the house? Margaret. Nicola, yeah. Let's say, so, have any of you started sowing your tomatoes yet? I know it's one of those, I think I really have my timing going well this year. I, I filmed a seedling tour today that I think will go up tomorrow or even maybe later today. Um, but I think all my seedlings are like right on schedule. So I'm um, kind of thrilled. I, I almost hate to say that uh, because, you know, uh, it's also you wait for the next shoe to drop, don't you? When you think everything, your timing is great. Uh, hi, Mags. Uh, so that's kind of where I am. And I'm a little behind here on the chat. So let me just catch up. Uh, okay, Claire, you're hilarious. Um, Claire's saying that it's usually chocolate and butter. Well, that's probably good for your, better for your glasses then. I leave mine on surfaces with the glasses, you know, with the lenses down. That's never, uh, that's never very smart. But anyway, let's, um, Oh, okay. So anyway, let's, I, I was going to share my screen with you guys and show you the tomatoes that I've started. And I, I, I'm not starting any more. I'm starting 24 varieties of tomatoes. I have room, uh, probably not for all of those, but as every year, I'll just get very creative and we will find places for the tomatoes. So I'm going to, I'm going to take just a little moment here uh, to pull up my share screen. Let's we're gonna try this one. Cause I thought that might really um, start the discussion. If we just start talking about, let's see if that's it. I think I got it. Yeah, so now can you all see uh, the data? I've got it. It's a database picture that I have up there. And now I just lost it. Okay, one second. Live is so much easier when someone else is doing it. <laughs> okay. So we're going to just talk about my 
varieties. There we go. Okay, so uh, I was gifted, thank you, Claire, from uh, Growing Plotty. Claire gifted me some Abraham Lincoln tomatoes, which I have never grown before. And as I said, I think these were probably developed in the US because, you know, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, but I'm growing them for the first time this year, so I'm very excited. Uh, I'm also growing a, sh a sugar super sweet 100, uh, which I've never grown. I've, well, I've only grown the sweet million, but I understand these are incredibly sweet as well. So I thought I'm giving these a shot. Now, Tim's Taste of Paradise is a new variety that comes from wild boar farms here in the U.S. And it was from a Brad great Blad, Blad, Brad Gates is the uh, the breeder of tomatoes at Wild Boar Farms, and almost everything he does is amazing. And this was a seed that he found from a previous breeder of seeds, who I'm not sure had passed or has stopped. Uh, breeding seeds and he now has come up with it and his name was Tim so we called it Tim's Taste of Paradise. This is supposed to rival um, Sun Gold and it does not split so I'm very excited. Uh, I'm very excited to see what those are like. Now this is another tomato that Claire from Growing Plotty also sent me and this is called Glorious Treat and I think it's like a yellow, a yellow tomato with a lot of red uh, veining uh, and the inside. So very excited. I have not grown a two-tone like that. So very excited. Here are my two rootstocks that I'm growing. Uh, and they are, as, as promised, almost caught up with the, all the tomatoes. Uh, I'm, I'm growing this... Um, Ananas Noir or Black Pineapple. I've heard very good things about those. Uh, Black Beauty. This I've grown several years. Uh, it's incredible. I, I prefer a darker tomato. I just think they're rich and smoky. Um, so this was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful tomato. Chef's Choice Black grew that last year, but this is one of those ones that I really want to put on a different stock because I didn't think it did really well on the one that the one that it comes with. It wasn't doing very well. Evil Olive uh, is pretty cool tomato. They do look like olives, which uh, I think is it's kind of cool is that, you know, green is ripe, but you can use them instead of a tomatillo. And that's the one I really, that's what I really want to grow these for. Uh, I grew them last year, didn't get a great harvest. I think I had some watering issues and we'll talk about that because that's part of what disease and strife is for your tomatoes. A lot of times can be corrected with proper watering. Uh, Longhorn is uh, again, a darker tomato, uh, almost heart-shaped, uh, very delicious. You can use these for paste or just for raw eating, but they're uh, very good. Mikado Black had a great harvest of those last year. Uh, very juicy. I love the tomato that's not all seeds, you know, and that was one of them. Uh, Orange Cordian. I've sent these out to a lot of my potty mouth cohorts. Uh, I have this vision of serving that, like slicing it down all those ridges and putting in a piece of buffalo mozzarella and a basil and serving it like this big round uh, caprese salad. So we'll see if that happens this year or not. Uh, Paul Robeson is a beautiful heirloom. 
again, one that I want to graft onto an F1 stock to see if we can get a little more production because I got to tell you, it's so, it's such a good tomato. Uh, and I would love to grow a few more of those. Uh, Queen of the Night, new tomato to me. Uh, I've heard mixed reviews on it, but I've got them in my seeds, so we're going to give it a try. Atomic Fusion is a large Brad's Atomic Grape. It's exactly the same genetics. Uh, and so I thought, well, wouldn't that be nice to get a bigger tomato with that uh, flavor? So Kryptonite, another one from Wild Boar Farms. Uh, quite honestly, I like the name. So that's why I'm growing that one. Uh, Atomic Sunset is another one from uh, Wild Boar Farms. It's like an orange uh, cherry that has uh, shoulders that are kind of plum. So very, I, I, I've yet to have one of uh, Brad's tomatoes that weren't like really good. Uh, you know, I wasn't crazy about the berries, crazy cherry, little watery, but a lovely tomato. I just, I'm not gonna choose not to grow them again. Black strawberry had a great harvest last year. Beautiful tomatoes. These are almost like uh, salad at, or is it, yeah, it's salad at, I think. So a little bit bigger. Uh, yeah, a little bit bigger than your average cherry. Blue chocolate, another one that's delicious. Brad's, you know, I know Brad. Brad's Atomic Grape has very mixed uh, reviews. I happen to find it really delicious, so I think that'll always be on my on my list. And my son-in-law's name is Brad, so I kind of have to grow them. I think uh, Honey Drop is another one that kind of rivals uh, Sun Gold. But it's not, uh, from what I understand, there's a little bit of, uh, not competition for for uh, Sun Gold, but they're keeping the patent on that one. And I think a lot of people are just trying to go, you know, let's, let's all get along and maybe grow these. So they're growing them out and trying to come up with an open pollinated version of sun gold uh, but i you know that takes generations of tomatoes to do that so honey drop delicious tomato napa chardonnay probably one of my favorite late tomatoes uh, it's just it's a great one to snack on when you're in the garden um chocolate dwarf champ uh chocolate champion dwarf uh was a great one last year so was Purple Heart uh, Dwarf. This is one of my absolute favorites. Uh, so complex and a great producer. And I love a good dwarf tomato because you don't have to, um, you know, they don't have to have trellises and you just gotta give them a little, a little help. You know, a, a, a cane or two to help them not bend over in, in large winds, but they're a lovely tomato. And Purple Rain also was one that uh, just produced incredibly for me last year. So that's my uh, 24 tomatoes for this season. Uh, here, let me see if I can unshare. Stop sharing. There we go. Um, let's see. I know I've talked there for like nonstop for a few minutes. But Cherokee Pu Purple. You I'm not reading well today. It's these glasses. I got to get rid of these. Cherokee Purple, Ukrainian Purple, and Japanese Black Trophilly. Uh, those are three dark tomatoes I am growing. I know that, uh, Jesse on plot 37 was like raving about the black, black Trafali. I grew them one year, like long ago. 
I didn't like them, but you know, I was probably in my twenties at the time. So maybe I need to give those another shot uh, because they didn't, I don't, I don't recall liking them. So, but I think, you know, she's an excellent, excellent gardener. So I'm like, well, maybe I need to revisit that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, dwarf tomatoes. Uh, I, I grow my tomatoes up the back of our garage. So I have those, the cords that you a lot of people use inside. Uh, it's more for commercial growing inside uh, hoop houses or big greenhouses. And I just have those attached to the back of my garage. So I grow up my uh, indeterminates up there. I just, it was nice to have some dwarfs that I could put in other places. But I know that I'm going to find, and I think I can grow 12 behind my garage pretty easily. Yeah, I, I think... I think, and again, I'm revisiting Black Trefelli because of how uh, how much Jesse just raved about them. And I thought, you know, our tastes change as we, you know, live on this earth a little longer. So I'm like, I could go back and revisit that one. But I, I really had to cut myself off at 24 varieties this year because um, I just had to. And I have, I think I have about 30 varieties of peppers going in this year. So it's a little, um, it's a little much. Now, what is uh, Clara saying? I think I'm just going to have to take my glasses off, quite frankly, because I can see better without them. Uh, I have Queen of the Night, and it's slightly late, I find. Pretty good, though, but potentially forgettable amongst some others. I don't think I'll throw it this year, but it, I'll put, put it in reserve. Yeah, I just, I, I think I liked the name. I think I liked how it looked. And I thought, I'm always a sucker, too, for trying new varieties. Even though I know I have some tried and true varieties, uh, I, I do like to try, I always like to try a new one. So next year... That might be this black Trefelli. What do you think? Uh, yeah, Stephen's saying, it's so true. Uh, I follow so many channels and I get so many ideas that it's hard to choose sometimes. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, depending on how I can find space for all these, I might be gifting some of those to other gardeners. Uh, because I don't want to just grow tomatoes this year. Oh, I, I know this is a diversion from tomatoes, but I found a baby cauliflower. Now, I, I've never seen a baby cauliflower. Uh, they, only, they only grow to like 10 inches in diameter, and they'll do like a nice, a nice size head. It's going to be a smaller head, obviously. But I thought, I'm trying so hard this year to deal with those white, awful white butterflies that like to lay eggs all over brassicas, which are, let's face it, is 60% of what we grow in a garden, right? So I am, I'm going to try this baby and see, because maybe it gets, it's a 40 day, 40 day cauliflower. So I'm thinking, uh, what could be bad about that, right? Pop them in quick, get them out. So, okay, I digressed from tomatoes. Sorry about that. So, uh, are, are you guys trying any new varieties this year? Uh, I'm, I'm saying I'm, I'm probably about 25% of what I'm growing this year is new, are new varieties. And I'm kind of excited to see, you know, how they do. Uh, I got a 40-day cucumber. Oh, wow. 
I got a 40 day cucumber from Ian at Grown Local. Awesome. He has some really nice seeds. It's days like that. Like when I see stuff like that, I'm like, oh, I wish I lived in the UK for that. But I don't. So I have to just enjoy it through the, those of you who do. Oh, Robin built another brassica cage. I got to tell you, um, my husband and I are sketching and resketching and trying to go, how can we get these horrible, these horrible butterflies, which I hate because I love butterflies. Um, and it's hard to kind of really hate one, but I just do. And I like come after, like after it's colder or before it's warm enough, have your day, but just don't, there's only anything that we've planted that's not for you. Um, <laughs> uh, this is Roxanne. I don't believe that. I've seen your garden. Uh, I'm too lazy to get my seed box. Can't remember them all. And that's okay. Uh Oh, wow. Oh, somebody was growing. I did see another uh, tomato. Let me go back. I missed it. And it's one I don't think I've heard of. Uh, Let's Grow Home is growing Honey Plus F1. Well, that sounds like it would be a lovely sweet. Uh, and, you know, I love F1s. They just produce a whole lot. Oh, let's see what. Claire is doing here. She's got purple heartthrob. I think we agreed that that was one of our favorites. Uh, Glorious Tree, Abraham Lincoln, Pantano, trying Rome again, maybe some outside. Caitlin's Lucky Stripe, and Mascot, Mascotka, uh, that Gary sent her. All right. I don't know a lot of those. But they sound good. And so do you have bad luck with Romas? Because I have a really good F1 Roma that I'm telling you, it produces, it produces, it produces. I'm doing one of those melon tomatoes. Never heard of a melon tomato. Uh does it look like a melon or does it have something uh, inside it that's more melony? Uh, my new tomato variety is Bonnie Best. I have that's a that's like a classic. Pink Bumble, Elfin, and Amish Paste. Elfin, love the name. That's a great name. Uh, we've got always looking for sweet, hearty, short season varieties. Yeah, you want to get them in and get them out, right? Because your summer, you're you're up in Scotland, so maybe your summer is a little shorter. Uh, oh, so the cucumber is, oh no, uh, that's not for me. Uh See, now we have put, uh, Robin is saying she uses four by four pop-up nets that work well against the cabbage whites on my raised beds. Now we have, I have done netting, you know, over hoops on, or yeah, netting over the hoops. Uh, and then I always end up with a cabbage butterfly on the inside, even though everything is tucked in and it's like, where on earth? Because there's no, it's not like, it's a very fine mesh. But there's always a butterfly in it. And last year, it just decimated my entire, my entire uh, bed. And, of, uh, and it was my cabbages and my broccolis. And I thought, these guys, they're killing me. Uh, Mags is growing Tigerella. I've heard great things about that one. Shimmer. Roma and Sun Gold. Sun Gold is still, I think, Gardener's Candy. 
but you got to catch them just right. So I will let you all know how the Tim's Taste of Paradise stacks up against Sun Gold. Wow, emptiness gardens, only one seed box. I have a small seed room. Well, God bless you, Steve. I, I, I can't live with one box. I just, I, I really have a kind of a problem when it comes to seeds. Um, oh, and I actually think, uh, it's funny that you would say that. Um, I'm going to do a live tasting during um, when we're harvesting. I have a uh, gardener that works with me. She used to be called an apprentice, but I think she pretty much knows everything I know at this point. And I think this might be the first time I can get her on camera because I think she should be. Um, but I think we're going to do a taste test uh, and talk about I, I'm looking forward to that. So, uh, I need to give it the moon on a stick. Okay. That's, I don't think that was an answer to anything I was saying. Uh, sweet short season sun gold. Okay. Yeah. Any, I think any of the cherry tomatoes, seem to write you know seem to produce fruit and uh ripen up quicker than any of the bigger beef steaks uh so i always find those like because they come in first so it's like snack time in the garden um uh, steven is saying he's growing three green tomatoes as we have fried green tomatoes about every three days all summer long now, are you growing green varieties or are you growing three that you'll just harvest when they're green? Uh, because I, I find those are the ones that kind of stand up to being breaded and uh, cooked a little more than like a ripe green. But I'd be curious um, how you do it. Uh Yeah, I don't, I don't know how they get in there because I, I think there was even one time where I know I hadn't lifted my nets yet for any reason. And you would think that you'd see a big white butterfly going towards your stuff, right? Uh, first time growing Nepal, pick it green and apparently can store for two months and then bring it out to ripen. Oh, so it's more like a storage tomato. Okay. Yeah, but isn't it the best, though, when the first tomato comes out of the garden? It's like, uh, I don't think there's anything like it. It's warm, and it's just that first taste of summer uh, that I think really is kind of the best. Okay, somewhat Willow Grove, and I believe that's Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. Uh, is asking is Tigerella sweet or acidic in flavor? So if someone in the chat could answer that for her, who's grown it, that'd be great. Ah. Oh, Claire, you're so funny. I might cross a sun gold with a purple heartthrob and call it a plotty gold. Well, if you do that, I will be your first customer because that would be like two of my favorites in one place. Yum. Uh, Stephen Blaze is growing Korean Long and Paul Robeson. Yeah, Paul Robeson. That is just the best. Never grown a Korean Long. I did see them this year though. Uh, yes, green varieties. Okay. Well, that's cool, Stephen. So Stephen is actually growing green tomatoes to do the fried green tomatoes. That's awesome. Never done it that way. I think, uh, I think you have some fans here, Claire, for making, uh, that cross. 
and sell and uh but then you have to but then you're going to have to um breed it out for many generations to make it open pollinated or you could just keep it an f1 for a few years uh let's see uh hi jason welcome i was just watching your video on parsnips because we're having that big parsnip uh, competition over at the Potty Mouth Garden Club. So if you don't know about that, uh, there was a special that was videoed last night. Yeah, this is Thursday. Last night about... Um, getting your parsnips started and what the rules are. And there's really not a whole lot of rules. It's pretty much start it, weigh it. I don't know if there's going to be like prizes. I I have to watch that whole video. I, got, I came in a little late and I didn't um, see all of it, but uh, yeah. Yeah. I've never, um, I'm not going to say I've never grown parsnips. I think the, the part that, put me off from growing parsnips was when I started watching some, and it was on YouTube, some of the videos where big, huge, like four inch PVC tubes are buried in the ground. And then a special sand mixture is made up. And it was like this, I mean, I want to put it in the ground and grow it and let it do its thing. And I may, I think maybe all that started when people were growing like the oversized fruit uh, or carrots for competition. But I thought, you know, I can buy a bag of organic um, parsnips uh, for not a whole lot. And uh, yeah, I, that just seemed like a whole lot for me. So but I did like on your on your video, Jason. You were, you had put them in those peat pots to get them started, because I do think germination is a, a part of the issue. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try some of your techniques. I'm gonna try a couple different ways to grow them and see what works here with this very warm summer that we get. Um, Okay. Uh, yeah. And so if you decide to join the parsnip grow off, um, you can join discord and there'll be a whole lot of other things, uh, that might help you along with that. Cause I think everybody's going to be sharing their pictures there. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Uh, I even have some uh, paper towel rolls that I thought I might kind of start them off in. Um, but cause I'm sure parsnips like everything else, when you grow them, they're better period, right? They're just better. Um, okay. So back to tomatoes. Uh, is there anything specifically that you struggle with, uh, in growing your tomatoes? Uh, I did not have any issues with uh, blossom end rot until two years ago when I started growing some of my dwarf tomatoes in, in tubs. And that was the first time I ever came across that. And I think part of it was obviously it's not in the ground. Uh, and I know... Uh, like one of the, well, I think the primary cause of blossom end rot is no calcium, but it doesn't mean, or lack of calcium, but it doesn't mean that the soil has no calcium. It's also, it's really caused because there's no way for the tomato to uh, get the calcium into its system. So a lot of that can be dealt with by keeping your tomatoes evenly watered 
you know, tomatoes don't like uh, wet, they don't like wet leaves. Wet leaves causes a whole lot of problems. Picking off a dead and dying leaves. Also cleans, like keep the space clear. Don't let, oh wow, dairy she beat me by two varieties. Uh, and I'm sorry, I, I said she, I, I should not have done that. I apologize. I've got 26 varieties started. My three favorites are Cherokee Purple, Sun Gold, and Black Crim. Three beautiful tomatoes. Uh, Oh, here's another tip, George. Welcome, George. He's saying he stores his parsnip seeds in the freezer, and when I put them out, I get great germination. Interesting. I don't know that I've ever seen those being stratified like that. I may try that too, because I'd really like to win this parsnip competition. I know. Not saying I will, but I well, I could. We'll see. I but I want to. So I'm going to try a whole bunch of these wonderful ideas from people that have grown parsnips for years. Um, okay, we're, we're going to try to get back to tomatoes again. So blossom and rot. Here's the thing. I did a lot of kind of reading up on uh, problems and bugs and all the things that um, affect tomatoes. And so many of them can be like proactively, uh, you're going proactively against them or, okay, let me say this better. It is better to be proactive about keeping your tomato plants healthy because they will become less vulnerable to some of the disease and some of the viruses that can plague them. So one of the, the best things to do, keep your tomato plants evenly watered. Uh, don't If you water in the morning or if you have to water from overhead, do it early in the day so that they can be, uh, the leaves can be dry before evening. So they don't, you know, they don't go into the evening all wet. Uh, clean off any dead or dying leaves, take off any fruit that looks like uh, it has been impacted by something. I mean, there are some worms that just love to dig themselves into a tomato. So take that off so that the plant itself is the healthiest it can be. And again, uptake of calcium really important. Uh, it's usually stifled because we've either had a lot of, a lot of drought, heat, uh, and then a heavy rain. Uh, so again, I think one of the, the keys here is just to keep your, um, your plants as healthy as you can. And as soon as you see something that doesn't look uh, correct, take the leaf off, take the fruit off and Google it. I mean, I hate to say this, but there's so many really good resources. Uh, a lot of universities that have ag agricultural programs, great resource for finding out what a problem is. Uh, and to just name a few, there's there's one here in my state, Michigan State University is an agricultural college, has great resources. Cornell University uh, is another one. And I think there's one in Minnesota that I have also gone to for a lot of information because this is cutting, you know, they're, this is university stuff. So they're, you know, they're kind of on the leading edge of some of this. So Look, 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 see those. I, I wouldn't just say Google it and read it from anybody's thing. I say go and um, 
go to a college, a website that specializes in um, agriculture, and you'll get a boatload of information. And that will help you too, because some of them even have the ability to have, you take a picture of what's going on and you can send it in and they will, you know, give you advice on what maybe it is. Because I think that's maybe what some of the students do who are in those programs. So um, it's a great resource. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, I've never heard of that one. Um, go back up. George was saying he's growing uh, Saladaki tomatoes again this year, a great semi beef tomato. No, I have not heard of that one. Now, are you in the U.S., George, or are, are you a U.K. gardener? Because I've not heard of that one. Uh, and also remember with your tomato plants to um, mulch on, under them to keep the soil when they're getting water from splashing back up onto the under part of the leaves because that is also how some soil uh, disease is transmitted. Uh, oh, Robin gets the hornworm. Those are the ugliest. Uh, those are the ugliest. Those are some of the ugliest creations under the sun. But typically they are covered in the parasitic wasp eggs. Well, I guess you have to pick your medicine there, right? Uh, but those usually are best uh, just picked off, right? But that might mean you'd have to touch them. I think I would use like kitchen tongs or something <laughs> to pull those up. I haven't had a, a, a problem with those. Okay, George, thank you. That's a UK uh, variety. Thanks. A semi beef, like it, because then it's not totally huge. It's just like a nice big size tomato. Uh, kitchen Garden Homestead is saying uh, they used quad grow last season. Fantastic for tomatoes. I have seen uh, a few folks using that. Uh, it almost looks too good to be true. As I've seen some people using it, I'm like, that's like, talk about getting nice, consistent, uh, nice, consistent watering. Uh, Claire's having trouble with her kale. I was noticing as I was filming this uh, seedling tour today, that um, I've had some lettuce issues and uh, there was one of my brassicas that just didn't, uh, didn't do well. And I thought, hmm, okay. Okay, Claire is also saying all four of her loofahs. Have you grown loofah before, Claire? Because those take over. They just, they, they, the vines are so big. Um, oh, here, I'll, I'll, yeah, the vines are huge. Um, but you, you know, you get your own, you get your own loofah. Uh, okay. Um, so anything else about tomatoes? Uh, we talked, we touched on I, I think blight is also one of those things that can hit all of us. Um, and, you know, early blight, late blight. Point is, if you see it, uh, you need to remove it because that's a, if one of your other plants has it, chances are good it's going to spread. So be sure to deal with that quickly. And unfortunately, it's kind of, you got to be kind of brutal with it because 
uh, it's not just going to go away. Um, and sometimes it can stay in the soil for like a year. So, you know, occasionally, so I just, and, and so much of it is caused by heat spells and then huge amounts of water and then coolness. Like tomatoes, although they're hardy and kind of want to grow uh, really well, they're a little fussy when it comes to their water and their conditions. So, just, and I know, you know, if it rains a lot, you can only do so much about that, right? Uh, let's see, what is Jason saying? I'm growing mascotka for the first time this year. Any specific tips, anyone? That is not a variety I have heard of. So, uh, let's see. Oh, I can't think Fletchy Babe is saying to scroll up to 1832 for some details. I think that's for you, Jason. Um, so hopefully that might be some tips that you can take away. So what is your favorite way to uh, either preserve tomatoes or deal with the glut that we tend to get uh, going into like September, October, you know, right before they're ready to uh, give it up. What is What are some of the best ways that you have found to preserve them? I do a lot of canning of tomatoes. I can pasta sauce. I can just roasted tomatoes. Uh, yeah, now also, you know, you can you can actually just throw your tomatoes in a freezer bag and throw them in. Because sometimes when everything is coming in the garden at the same time, you don't always have time to preserve everything or do what you want to with them at the time. But if you throw your um, tomatoes, they don't have to be skinned. Matter of fact, I wouldn't bother. I sometimes cut out the stem end so I don't have to deal with that little brown piece uh, and then throw them in the freezer. And like right now, I have about four large bags of tomatoes that are there from last season. And I need to get them out because I need to make a little room in the freezer for what's coming in this year. So I will roast those. Uh, and the beauty of it is when you freeze a tomato, as they thaw, the skin just comes right off. So it's very easy, but I normally roast mine with the skins on and uh, give it a good, you know, whirl in the food processor. And I don't, I think to make the skins uh, give it a lot of flavor. So, uh, and I do make a lot of sun-dried tomatoes, only my son is in a dehydrator in my kitchen but I do like those. Uh, pickled, uh, I think pickled tomatoes, like pickled cherry tomatoes, lovely. Uh, you just need to poke like a hole in it so that the pickling liquid gets on the inside. I also freeze uh, cherry tomatoes just in freezer bags. And if you make omelets or frittatas, or anything like that. You can sprinkle them on frozen and they will cook beautifully and they taste like they're a fresh, uh, they'll taste like a nice fresh tomato. They're lovely. Uh, so I think there's so many things uh, to do with them and there's so many uses for them. So I think obviously it's a great 
it's a great crop to grow. Claire just scoffs them on sight. Uh, basil and mozz, yeah, isn't that just the classic yummy? And I think I've mentioned this on a previous one. I had my first tomato sandwich last year. Uh, I don't know why it never kind of dawned on me to just eat a tomato sandwich. And oh my goodness, now I know why people uh, enjoy those. And I even went and got Duke's mayonnaise because apparently, at least here in the U.S., I don't know if Duke's is over there, you need to use Duke's. So I even did that. So, uh, yeah, it was very good. So that will be a nice addition this year as well, is to have a nice tomato sandwich. Anyway, I'm just really excited that we're here. And remember, tomatoes are in the same family as eggplants, uh, peppers, potatoes. You know, they're all part of the nightshades family. So if you get uh, blight on your potatoes and they're anywhere near any of the other nightshades, that can easily, that can easily spread. So just, uh, just be aware of that, that they are all really the same family. So, uh, well, I, I heard one, one YouTuber who I follow, she says um, that eating a tomato that's not fresh from the garden is like tasting disappointment. And I must say, I absolutely agree with that. Once you have grown your own, you're never going to buy uh, a tomato again. I, I occasionally will buy the little cherry ones in the middle of winter, but <laughs> well, Stephen, uh, I heard it from a Georgia gardener and I thought, you know, if that's how, and because I think tomato sandwiches probably came uh, from more of the southern states anyway, uh, because it's, you know, they can grow those like crazy down there. So anyway, so that is, I heard that from, actually from the gentleman who owns Haas Tools, because he has a gardening show and he's the one. Yes, Roxanne, that's correct. It is um, Jessup Roots and Refuge, which I think is just the best because it's so true it is so true uh mags is saying her husband has never tried a tomato see i just wow you would wow that's interesting because when you because they're so prevalent you would kind of go well maybe i should at least try it yeah well god bless them uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to not have tried a tomato. I think they're they're a summer gift. Come on. It is like summertime. <laughs> Claire. Well, he's 70. He could still be hot, as Claire says. Uh So, are, are all our tomatoes, have we started our tomatoes yet? Or, is there, or are you holding out a little bit more? Uh, so, are we starting them? Mine are all in. They're up. They're bigger than my... Uh, they're bigger than my hot peppers already, and they've been in for a week. But I think that's how it goes. Uh, because, as you know, I'm, I'm grafting a lot of my tomatoes this year. So I really did want to get off to a little bit early start so that I could see. Yeah, indoors. What did I twist your arm to do, Claire? Start your tomatoes. Oh. 
you'll be okay. Because I don't know when your last frost date is. Um, but my our last frost date is like April, I'm going to say April 20th. So I'm not that early. Uh, but I don't usually put my tomatoes out until 1st of May. Just because I want the ground to be warm enough so they're not um, getting, I don't want them to get hit with cold at all. So I kind of let those linger a little bit. Okay. Well, and, and Roxanne, you're about a month behind me. So that makes, um, that makes great sense. And Scotland's like mid May. So we're getting, you know, and tomatoes should be started, what, six to eight weeks before your last frost. So I, I think many of us are kind of right there. You buy your tomatoes, Linda, or you, oh my goodness, Linda Glenn. Welcome, Linda. Um, good to have you here. Linda is one of my dearest friends. And so I think she's just popped in and she's not lying. She buys her tomatoes. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so anyway, I think we're kind of, we're kind of coming up on the hour here. So uh, yeah, once again, oh wait, Robin is started her toms this week. Yep. Uh, they might. Be a little, I felt like I was a little early, but again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be cutting all their little heads off and re, you know, restructuring them. So I think they'll lose about a week or two. Uh, Cherokee purple, Tim's, ta oh, Tim's Taste of Paradise. Japanese black trafali and Brad's Atomic Grape. Lovely, lovely selection. Well. Thank you all for coming in. It is so nice to get to know each of you. Uh, and welcome to, we had a couple, George uh, was new. And Jason, I'm, I, you know, you might have been here before. I'm not sure. But we had a couple guests or new faces or maybe new people that didn't comment before but now are. So thank you so much. And... Uh, you have a good week. Have a great week. Uh, you're still not in a rush if you haven't done your tomatoes, but I think you're, I think you're getting, I think we're getting close. So anyway, you take good care. Have a great gardening week with all the miscellaneous crazy stuff we have to get done before we can get out and plant them. So I will see you next week. Same time, same place. Bye now.